All right. One of the most frequently asked questions. Will I get visa of this country? Will I get an extension of my visa in this particular country? Will I get a work permit? Will I get a residence permit? Will I get a PR? Will I get a citizenship? Will I get dual citizenship? Or will I get something at all? <laughs> So these questions are becoming more and more frequent and they are sometimes related to a person's marriage or career or maybe sometimes both or maybe due to health reasons they might have to change uh, their residence from a particular country and move back to their, home, to their homeland or maybe their parents uh, are in need and uh, they have to come back to their home country, right? So the n number of scenarios which can actually come so therefore how do you actually uh, end up predicting uh, that if a person will uh, go will get a chance to go right or how long will the person stay right or will the person stay forever or will the person stay for maybe 20 years become a citizen of a particular country and then maybe the person returns back to uh, the home country, right? So there are uh, at least thousand scenarios which can occur. But then within that, you have to try to distinguish. Uh, if the person is asking, uh, will I get a visa? So you, you, you got to ask, what kind of a visa is it? Is it a tourist visa, travel visa for three months, six months, one year, two years? Or is it a student visa? Or is it a work permit or is it an employment visa which means you go to that country and you search a job there right or uh, there are some special visas where uh, people get uh, like citizenship or a pr very fast right now, there are certain special visas within special kind of with, within some countries right and then there is citizenship which is like irrespective of where the person stays right because uh, even if a person is a citizen of a new country, the person could still maybe end up staying uh, in their home country for a considerable period of time. Or the person may be a PR holder and still stay uh, for some months in the country. So the more the, more the complexity of uh, the, re the requirement of the visa, the more the difficult it is to analyze, right? So there are many guidelines which you can use for this, right? So one of the things is you have to understand which house is related to visa, PR and all this, right? What, what, what is it at the end? It's a document, right? It's very simple. It's basically a permit. It is something where somebody signs, right? Uh, but is it a very simple document? like the electricity bill or a phone bill? Well, absolutely not. It's a very big document, right? So if somebody is giving you permission to enter their country, it's a big document, right? Because you have the power to go and do whatever you wish, of course, subject to consequences there. You have the power to elevate the people of their country or harm them, right? So when you hear these words, their country, their people, what does uh, what comes to your mind? <laughs> yes, you're right. It's the government. It's the people's representatives, right? The uh, whatever it's a monarchy or a democracy or whatever autocracy or whatever. <laughs> so it's basically the government. <clears throat> so whenever you talk of visa or you start with visa, anything related to visa, right? Up to citizenship small visa, three months visa up to citizenship. Always remember, it is referring to two houses, not one. It's not the third house, right? Third house could be that, uh, but it is something much more than that, right? So it is an addition with the third house, right? Third house could mean you are publishing some article somewhere, but imagine you get international fame. So that will not just be third house, right? That, that will be 12th house added to the third house that will be 10th house 11th house so 
you, you, you have to understand how you can combine the houses, right, for a particular event of life. <clears throat> so therefore, you have to understand that whenever you are running, because see, the third house and is a document and 10th house is the government. So it's like a document given to you by the government for a particular purpose. If the fourth house is linked, it can be education. If the if the sixth house is linked or the 11th house, it can show employment, right? If both the sixth and the 11th are linked, it can show scholarship along with the fourth and the ninth uh, or sometimes even the second house because the second, fourth and the ninth and the fifth, of course, they are houses of education. We know that, right? Now, within that fifth house can show a bachelor's degree. Not necessarily, but I'm just trying to tell you how should you approach this, right? And then, of course, we have the ninth house, which can show master's, PhD, and all this, right? So, therefore, you have to understand that, first of all, you have to check the overall chart of the person, right? So, if, if the person's third house is very badly afflicted by natural malefics or by functional malefics, right? or the third lord is in a dustana then dustana in the bhava chart not in the lagna chart all right so if you do not know what is a bhava chart please go and type exotic astrology bhava chart you will find it b h a v a right so please check your bhava chart and see where is the third lord placed and you also have to see if the lords of the dustanas are placed in the third house right sixth lord eighth lord or twelfth lord in the third so then it, it's like a given fact that it can be a bit difficult for somebody to get visa of a particular country right of course which country it is for how long that we will see later but this is a basic thumb rule so and on the contrary if your third lord and the 11th lord they are somehow conjunct or they are mutually aspecting or they are in parivartan, they are sitting in each other's houses, which, which, which is like the parivartan. Or there is a connection with the lagna or the 10th house. Then uh, it is relatively easier for you to get visa or any kind of permit, especially the 11th house is linked. Very, 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 very beneficial, right? I'm not saying you will get, there are a thousand other things, but this is something which you need to start, right? And then you got to check the strength of the overall chart. So for example, if the Lagna Lord is very strong, if the sun is very strong, if Mercury is good, then the person can, you know, negotiate and like get things done. So those parameters will always hold true, right? So do not disassociate those and just look at your third house. It will lead to a blunder, right? I see people doing that all the time in the comments, right? So now, as I said, third house, you will see the comments will be filled. Oh, my third Lord is here. What you are speaking is wrong. Actually, it doesn't work, you know. First of all, they will not check the bhav chart. I can guarantee this. 90% of the people who are into, into YouTube astrology, they don't know what's a bhav chart, right? So they will say, oh, I'm this lagna. My third Lord is in this Rashi, so it's in that house. Right, they think the Rashi and the house are the same. Actually, it's not because a planet can be in a particular sign, but it may be in a different house in the bhav chart. Right, actually, it's never in a different house, but it's the way it appears. Right now, suppose you have all these placements, right? Your Lagna is strong, your 10th house is strong, your 11th house is strong, and the third house is especially strong. So then you know your chances of getting a visa or a PR or a work permit or citizenship is higher, right? Then you got to check which are the planets that are indicating these houses, right? So for example, if Saturn, Rahu, Ketu are indicating uh, the third house, the 10th house or the 11th house or the Lagna, then it, it, it could be possible that you end up going to uh, underdeveloped countries or developing countries, right? Or you might go to a developed country, but the state or the city or the place, uh, the, the location of uh, your locality, basically, that 
may not be a very uh, nice locality. It's very well possible. Unless those natural benefits are receiving the conjunction or aspect of a natural benefit, unless, right? So for example, if you are running Saturn Rahu in Dasha, and Saturn is conjunct with Jupiter or you know, Jupiter is aspecting Saturn, then that can mitigate the effects, right? So, and on the other hand, if you are running the Dasha of natural benefits like Jupiter, Moon, Mercury, Venus, then the chances are more that you end up going uh, to a developed country. Now, suppose you are running Saturn Mahadasha and you are running Jupiter Antardasha. So where will you go? Will you go to a developing country or to a developed country? Which country? Difficult, right? So in that case, the Pratyantar is very important. So if you are running Saturn, Jupiter, uh, Rahu, then it could be an underdeveloped country or a developing country. And if it is Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, then it could be a developed country, right? And along with that, it's very important that you check which houses are linked. So, for example, if the second house and the fourth house are associated, because the second house shows family and the fourth house shows motherland, right? So, imagine a person gets a good dasha and the person goes to uh, pursue bachelors in a foreign country. But then his second house or fourth house is getting activated. So then it is possible. And along with that, if the 10th house is activated. So it is very well possible that during this dasha, after three years or two years or five years, the person may return back to the homeland and get a very good job there and settle. right? But if after the education, the successive years at least two years three years or five years or ten years at least three to five years if the ninth house or the twelfth house is linked in the dasha planets which means you are running the antar dasha of the ninth lord or the twelfth lord right so then it's much more likely that you your stay abroad in abroad will be continued after your education right and it's also possible that if the Dustana houses are linked, then you might still stay ab in abroad, but you might be in problems. For example, you might have to seek asylum. You might have to um, pay money to somebody, bribe and all this, right? Yeah, it, it happens. Or you might have to enter illegally or you might go like a refugee, right? Now, I'm not saying you should uh, pay bribe, but these are scenarios which you can encounter, right? Because the Dustana houses, they will always take something from you, right? They will suck your blood somehow. <laughs> They're like blood suckers, right? So whenever uh, the Dustanas are activated and you are having some serious crisis, like, you know, they are saying that we won't extend your visa for the next, uh, for the next time, then you know, a, it's, it's something serious, right? Now, what, of course, you may say, oh, but my second lord's dasha is activated. So whenever the second house and the fourth house are activated, you may go back to your homeland with your free will, right? But along with that, if the dustanas are associated, then it could be possible you might be deported. You are thrown to your country, right? You are discarded. You are dismissed by the government of that country and you go and fall back to your homeland. Right, this could also happen. So, and of course, uh, you also need to check the numerology. So, in numerology, if somebody has uh, the number four, then it is uh, very well probable that the person may go to an underdeveloped country or like uh, stay in situations within the developed countries where the state is not very developed or some, some something of that sort can happen depending on the dashas of course so uh, that's again very subjective and somebody who has number seven can end up going to a developed country right but again you have to combine astrology and numerology there are thousands of people who have the number four and they have gone to developed countries and who have number seven and they have also gone to underdeveloped nations okay so therefore, you 
you have to check both the numerology and the astrology. If you just check one, it will lead to a blunder, right? And ultimately, of course, if the upcoming Mahadashas of a person indicate the ninth house or the 12th house, so for example, if you are running Jupiter Mahadasha, and then your Saturn and Mercury, which because they are very long, right? Saturn is 19, uh, Mercury is 17. So almost, and Jupiter also you started 16 years. So almost 40, 50, 55 years, maybe. Uh, if all the three are indicating that, you know, they are in the ninth house or the 12th house, or, you know, the ninth, they are conjunct the Lords of the ninth or 12th. So then, you know, there is a possibility of settling abroad permanently, right? So then you can say, now, of course, within that also, if the Dustana houses are linked, what will happen is you will stay abroad permanently, but you will not be a citizen. Maybe you will be a PR holder, or maybe you will have to keep extending your visa again and again and again and again endlessly, right? So Dustana houses will always suck your energy, your money and your 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 life basically right it sucks things so therefore and of course if it is the sixth house you know they, they it, it's like a situation where you have to pay some extra money right or there is like you have to file an application once again if the eighth house is involved the application can be rejected outwardly right or there may be case of fraud against you right you have given some fake documents like false false documents or you have given or there could be allegations of forgery against you right and of course if the 12th house is associated you could be deported now the 12th house is a very peculiar house because it shows that you are kicked off from you have been kicked off from a particular country and it also shows shows you are abroad so therefore you have to be very critical when you analyze this if the 12th house is linked with the 10th house or the 11th house or the third house or the lagna so then it can show that you are permanently abroad but if it is linked with other dustanas like the sixth or the eighth it can show your plans of going abroad and settling has been permanently thwarted or it will come after a lot and a lot and lots of difficulties a lot of challenges right so so once you look at your chart you you have to understand that to what extent uh, can I be realistic when I expect uh, that, you know, I want to go to this country and settle or I want to stay there for five years or, you know, I want to um, become a PR holder or I want to become a citizen of that country, right? So I am also interested to know what is going on in your chart. Um, which dasha did you go abroad? And what happened after you went there? And uh, please let me know in the comments. I would love to learn from all of you also. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to down below. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you fly abroad. Thank you.